Let's uh, have a word of prayer, and we will jump in with both feet here. <laughs> okay. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege to be able to open your word again and to study it. We ask that the leadership of your spirit be with us. Open the eyes of our hearts and grant us understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, for those of you signing in on the live stream, I'm Pastor Cliff Harden, pastor at First Baptist Church of Lacoste, Texas, located west of San Antonio, uh, just uh, about 10 miles or so. Okay, Revelation. Oh, goodness. I showed you all the stack this morning. You can see my stack here of notes and stuff we're going through. There, <clears throat> so much. Maybe I've read too much or something. <laughs> it is it's mind-boggling, uh, but I just want to make sure that I, I am as accurate uh, as I possibly can. <clears throat> so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> We do not have a microphone sitting out here today because I don't think that does any good. Uh, doesn't really pick y'all up. I'm hoping that this will work better tonight uh, as far as, as the uh, live stream is concerned on that. Uh, so what we're going to do is... Hello? <laughs> I didn't hear it on that. I heard somebody breathing. <laughs> I'm going to kind of hit just a little bit on a <clears throat> a uh, review. Uh, I think it's going to be necessary for in order for us to kind of keep up with where we're going and where we're coming from on that. Uh, we covered uh, <clears throat> um, the uh, seven churches. That was week before last. And uh, the letters to to the churches, and as you recall, that's in the second and third chapters is where we find those. Um, <clears throat> they're letters that Christ dictated to the angels of the seven churches, whom he addressed uh, the, the the letters to, and each. Uh, book specifically, or each letter rather specifically, uh, addresses a church. And each of these churches were in existence in that day. Now, we talked about what uh, the good things and the bad things of each of the church churches were. I'm not going to go over that uh, tonight, but... Uh, Maybe just kind of a, a brief touch on each one as, as I uh, cover it again. But uh, uh, what we're wanting to do is to understand why that's in the Bible. Why did God put the seven churches in chapters 2 and chapters 3? Why is it important for us to read about them and, and understand what he's saying when he's talking to the churches. Well, uh, <clears throat> these seven churches also represent a period of time in history as well. Okay? So we have uh, the uh, church of Ephesus. Okay? Uh, and... That is the church of the first love, and it's also called the apostolic. 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 <laughs> apostolic. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I could not get that out. The apostolic church. Okay? Uh, and that's Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Well, also now, in, in the... the uh, time frame 
uh, of history, the Ephesus church represents a period of time from 33 A.D. to 100 A.D. Okay? Uh, and uh, 33 A.D. was Pentecost. That's when that referring back to it wasn't exactly maybe on that specific time, but but uh, uh, the time frame is there from Pentecost until 100 A.D., and that is when the Apostle John died. Um, now, as you remember, the commendation for the Ephesus church was hardworking, persevering, discerning a false doctrine, okay, the Nicolaitans. Uh, <clears throat> now, the second time frame, the second church is the church of Smyrna. Now, Smyrna uh, is a time frame from 100 A.D., until 312 A.D. Now, if 100 A.D. to 312 A.D. is uh, Constantine is when Constantine during that time frame made Christianity a state religion, uh, permit uh, okay. Uh, with pagan customs and practices also mixed in with it, okay? So the time frame of 100 A.D. to 312 A.D. is the second church, Smyrna. Uh, the accommodation on that was it was um, aff afflicted with poor, persecuted, yet uh, faithful, uh, people and and uh, they were rich in the Lord, but uh, they were not wealthy as as such. Now, the third church is the church of Pergamus or Pergamum. Okay, uh, let me back up, back up to the Smyrna here. I left this off this note here. Uh, Diocletian, D-I-O-C-L-E-T-I-A-N. Okay, the persecuted church from Diocletian to Constantine. Okay, that's that's the the time frame there, of uh, the one hundred to three twelve. Now, starting at at uh, three twelve, now the church Pergamum is referred to as the state church or the church under imperial favor. It was under Constantine. That was this time frame. Okay, I made a, a, a false statement then a while ago. It's under this uh, time frame here, the third one, 312 to 606 A.D., that Constantine uh, did all, all the stuff that, that he did. And this is also, they called it the state church because this is the time frame in which the uh, uh, Roman Catholic Church was started, okay? Uh, the uh, commendation for this, they have not renounced their faith despite their martyrdom of Antipas. Now, uh, also under... Uh, under Constantine, that is when Christianity was the popular thing to do, and of course, that's why that's how the, how the church was uh, brought into being. The Catholic Church was brought into being at at that time. Now, the fourth church is Thyatira. Thyatira is referred to as the Papal Church or the Dark Ages. Revelations chapter 2, verses 18 to 29. Uh, it's also the Roman Catholic uh, time frame. Idolatrous, and referred to as also as the idolatrous 
church. Now that is from 606 until 1517 A.D. Okay? Uh, the Roman Catholic Church, ongoing at that time, uh, up until the, the time frame of 1517, is also, during this time frame, is also the beginning of the Protestant Reformation. Okay? The commendation for that is love, faith, service, and perseverance. Okay? Now, the fifth church is Sardis. Uh, it's referred to as the Reformation Church, the Protestantism, the 16th and 17th centuries, uh, and uh, it's also referred to as the dead church. <laughs> Uh, the time period on that it starts at 1517 and goes through 1750 A.D. Okay? The Protestant Reformation ongoing at that time, the Great Awakening began, was beginning to begin, okay? That's when Jonathan Edwards in 1735 and John Wesley uh, started preaching, and John Wesley started preaching in, in America in 1738. Now, the commendation for them it was it was a remnant of holy people, okay? Now, uh, then the sixth time frame, the sixth church, is the uh, Philadelphia church. It's referred to the evangelistic church, uh, and also it's referred to as the missionary church. It's the period that is ushered in by the Puritan movement, okay? Now, the time frame of that is 1750, are you ready? Until the rapture. <laughs> What does that say? We're in that time frame. We're in the time frame of the missionary church, the evangelistic church. It is also called the church age. Okay? Um, and, and all. Now then, there's something that happens during this church age. Um, the... Uh, let me let me mention the the commendation for this is it has little strength it kept god's word but it did and it did not deny his name now then in my notes it has for each one of these it has a complaint something you know that was what jesus said against each one well in this group of notes, there's nothing there yet. So God has not put his judgment on us. And I thought, that's a good thing. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that the complaint, that hadn't been passed out yet. No. <laughs> uh, we can, we can go ahead and pass these out. Uh, the, what this is, this is a map. She put one on, a larger one on, the, on both sides. Uh, it shows you where all of the churches are located in, in uh, the area of Turkey and all of that in, in, in that. So it just uh, uh, gives, you a, gives you an idea. <laughs> she she had the colors out and everything. <laughs> okay. Uh, so anyway, this this just kind of gives you an idea of where the the physical location of the church was uh, in in that day. <clears throat> uh, so. But something happens now in this church age 
right now that uh, we have the Philadelphia church and the seventh, which is the sixth church, and the seventh church, which is Laodicea. And, and on my chart that I got here, it's showing church age, then it shows a split right here. The Philadelphia church, the evangelistic church, and then the Laodicea church, which is called the apostate church. Okay? And uh, it's also called the rejected church are the church of the final apostasy. Chapter 3, verses 14 to 19. Okay, now, uh, the Laodicean church, uh, the time frame for that is starting in the 1900s. So, A.D. 1900, apostrophe S, okay, Neo- Orthodoxy, liberal seminaries, challenge of biblical inspiration, all of this was be, is coming out at this time. Can, can we not uh, relate to that? Okay, as we look around, we can see uh, the challenge of, of biblical accuracy, uh, people that are saying that they don't believe in church. Uh, they don't believe in, in, in the Word of God. The of they God. take it and they twist it to mean what they want. They have uh, some uh, organizations, uh, denominations have uh, sanctioned uh, lesbianism. They have even got uh, ordained uh, ministers who are lesbians and homosexuals, men uh, and, and women. And uh, I don't know anywhere in the Bible that it says that's biblical. Um, I'm going to make a statement that's going to be upsetting to some women, but nowhere in the Bible does it say that a woman is to be a pastor. Uh, now, I'm not saying that a woman cannot minister to people. I believe that's possible. There's, there are areas where women can serve and should serve. Uh, but as far as being the pastor of a church, um, I do not know of any biblical background, backup foundation, I guess is a better word, that uh, would support that uh, at all. So anyway, now probably when Facebook hears me say this, they'll probably cancel this. So I will be put in Facebook jail, yeah, most likely. But, but that's okay. So I will room comfortably with PK because she's there frequently. You know, I think for women to be pastors, I think God has men. Men, men were. If you look at scripture, men were biblical. They were. They were put in authority. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. <clears throat> for a reason. Because because that's just the way God created it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Now I have nothing uh, no qualms at all about women ministering and, and leading groups and Bible studies and things. There's nothing wrong with that uh, that at all. They're they're under the shepherd. But that's right. Yeah. Yeah. The churches have turned or the men have There have been women leaders, yeah, it, it and there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, uh, in situations that, yeah, yeah. like but, that, but it, it's not common for a woman to be in the, the actual pastor, yeah. the yeah. role of pastor. Yeah. But God has raised up women when there was no man to do the job. Yeah. I mean, Deborah and Esther, and yeah. I can't even think of the rest. But there's just quite a few women. Yeah, yeah. and they were leaders, and and they helped, but they were not in that specific position. Uh, is is right. 
is what I'm saying. I'm not trying to get into that. That's a whole different subject. So let's let's move on uh, quickly on that. Uh, on on that. So um, okay. So we've got to remember that uh, that sixth church is referred to as the apostate church. Why? Is because it has gotten away from the true teachings of the Word of God. It's been watered down. It's been changed. It's been explained, and all of these things like this have have, have been been given. Uh, but the Word of God still says the same thing. No matter how you want to water it down, that's that's what we've got to go by on that. So uh, the uh, all of that, okay, now, how much longer we're going to be in this particular age, I don't know. I can't, I can't answer that uh, at, at all, but I do know that uh, God is in control, and at the right time, the proper time, then God is going to... Uh, the trumpet's going to sound, and we're going to hear it, and we're going to go poof, <laughs> right with with him. Yeah. Now, I've got a little timeline thing here that I'm not uh, passing out tonight because I've given y'all timeline charts before, uh, and and all. But just as a review of of what we're looking at, it's not on that page that that you've got there. Um. On this timeline, it goes all the way back to Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection. Starting at the resurrection. It has the resurrection of Jesus, and then 40 days later, it has his ascension. And then uh, it shows in, in uh, Revelation chapters 1, 2, 3, it's defining it as the church age. So we're still in that time frame right now of the church age. We've not gone into the next one, which will be in chapters 4 and 5 is where uh, Jesus comes for his church, what's called and referenced as the rapture. Now you understand, the word rapture is not in the Bible. Nowhere, not anywhere. I understand that. I know that. But when you understand the definition of what rapture is and what's happening, then that's how we talk. That's what how we use to refer to Christ coming and taking his church. Now, there's arguments here that come up that say, okay, what do you do? Are you saying the rapture is the second coming? No, I'm not. It is a coming of Christ, but it's not the second coming. You see, the second coming that the Bible is referencing there when it talks about the second coming of Christ is when he actually puts his feet on earth. Okay? That's the second coming. Now, so the rapture is the Christ coming to take his church home, to lift us out of here. This is before... The tribulation. Now we'll get into all of this pre, post, and all, all of this uh, as 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 we progress on here. Uh, but the church is taken out nowhere from chapter four on. Do you see the church after it's taken out? It's not in Revelation from that point on. We have been taken out of here. Uh, and now there's there's a lot can be said on that, but we won't get into that uh, right now. So, uh, but that is uh, most theologians that I have read and all refer to that as the beginning of the tribulation. Okay, the seven year time frame in there. Exactly how that the the specific beginning of that I I don't know. I have not read anything that really defines it in a detailed point uh, on, on that. It's, 
uh, but it is after the church has been taken out. That's when the tribulation will be. Um, and that's uh, Revelation uh, chapter 6 through 18. Now, there's a lot of stuff happens in chapter 6 through 18, okay? And um, then at that point, at chapter 19, then we see the second coming of Christ at that point, okay? That's when the second coming is going to be. And then we, that's, that brings in all together then the uh, millennial time frame, the 1,000 years of reigning when Christ is here on earth and he actually reigns here on earth. Now, I kind of think I knew this, but uh, and as I was reading the other day, and I think I heard somebody mention it on the radio as, as, as well, during that thousand years reign that Christ is here, it's going to be, for lack of a better word, status quo. We're still, the people are still going to get married. They're still going to have children. They're still going to have decisions to make, good decisions. They'll make bad decisions. They'll sin. And, and, and all of this, life will go on during that time frame. Now stay with me. Don't leave me. Okay? Stay with me. Uh, <laughs> just bring drawing the blank. Just drawing the blank. Uh stay with me because uh think about it. What happens on also now during that thousand years, where's Satan gonna be? In the bottomless pit. Okay, he's going to be bound, and he's he's going to be cast into the bottomless pit. Okay, now when Satan comes out, what does he do? He gathers together those who are non-believers. There will be non-believers during that thousand-year reign. It has to be for it to come together as fast as now. I don't. I say fast. I don't know. I mean, it could be a, it could take him a thousand years because it's you know that's like a day in 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 God's time frame. But the more I, I I think about it, that makes sense because Satan's been gone, and yet the influence of him has still been here, even though Christ Himself is sitting on the throne and judging and ruling. Well, if he's going to be sitting here judging and ruling, then that says to me that there's been some people that have been probably doing things that they shouldn't ought to have been doing in the first place. So sin at that point has not been abolished. Okay? So uh, if it hasn't been abolished, then I don't think the Scripture said that all of the demons were thrown into the bottomless pit. It was just their leader who was thrown in the bottomless pit. Now, folks, I can't go to a scripture and, and open it up and, and say, see, that's what it says right there. I, I can't do that. Th this is just... Speculation from what you've read. What I've read, and yes. And people still have a choice. And people still have choices yes. to make. And, and sin has not been... Right. Done away with, eradicated at that point. So as I thought about it, I thought I had never really thought about it until I heard this guy talking about that. And I thought, well, that kind of makes sense, you know. And so when when at the end of the thousand year time, then Satan will be released and he'll be back among the people and he will find those of like mind because his demons are going to be there. They're going to say, hey, boss, <laughs> let me show you. While you've been gone, okay? And 
then they're going to gather together a mighty, mighty, mighty force to try to overthrow the Lord himself. And, and of course, we know the end of it. We know how it comes out, that the word right straight out of the mouth of God, and pew, they're, you know, they're uh, done away with. And at that point then, that's when death and hell will be thrown into the lake of fire. And I think that is when sin is going to be eradicated at that point, after all of all of that. Now, now I I kind of gone through real quick here. You know, uh, uh, we have the lake of fire. We have the great white throne judgment, and all of all of this. And by the way, the Christians are going to get are going to get judged. Okay, it's called the judgment seat of God. Okay, uh, the great white throne is the those that have sinned against God and against Him specifically. So, and then there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. So we know at that point, sin's going to be eradicated. It's going to be gone. We're going to have a complete, total makeover. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> That'll be good. All the mess we made of this earth is going to be removed. That's right. That's going to be a, a new heaven and a new earth is going to be at that point. And, and that's, uh, you know, uh, Revelation 21 and 22 uh, on, on that. So <clears throat> it's, it's, it's easy. I think it's important that we understand a, a time frame. Now, as, as we begin to look at, at all, of, all of this, uh, isn't that a neat picture? <laughs> Uh, okay, we have uh, in our, our time frame, we've got that we're going to be covering. We'll have the, the, the rapture. Uh, we'll have the tribulation, the second coming to judge the world, the millennial to, uh, time to rule the world, and the new heaven and a, and a new earth uh, all. And uh, I, I guess maybe next time, we come back, <clears throat> I'll hand out this uh, Revelation prophecy chart, which I thought was rather interesting because what it does, it breaks down <clears throat> each, each time frame. Did I give that to you? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, well, we'll need to... Have to drag out Brother Jeremiah's book. Yeah, I've got. Uh, I've read at least once. But right here. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have an older version. That's one well, I've got the older one too. <laughs> but, I mean, it's it's uh, basic. I've got two sets of yeah. them. Uh, uh, no, no, this one's been s several years uh, on that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and and that's some interesting reading, and I'll probably be pulling some of the stuff when we start getting in to some of the more detailed uh, here. But uh, uh, anyway, this that is good. You can read through here. I like reading over this chart. Okay, y'all got one. Okay, that's good. Warren Weir's, okay. Law will reign, but law will not change people's sinful hearts. Yeah. People will still revolt against God. The millennium will be a period of peace and perfect environment. A time when disobedience will be judged swiftly and with just and with justice. Yet in the end, peace. Uh, S e i g n e d. Uh, subjects of the king will follow Satan and re rebel against the Lord. A perfect environment cannot change the it's, it's hard to believe for me that with Christ, the Son of the living God, actually feet on ground and people still rebelling against him. Maybe he'll just like judge them and they'll be gone. 
<laughs> if, <laughs> if, if I were, yeah, that's what <laughs> I'd go. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be my scoop justice. Well, I don't think the, I don't think the penitentiaries will be empty. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking from what oh, oh, Warren Wiersbe is saying, what she read about what he said, it kind of sounds like he's pretty much thinking the same way that law is going to be here, mm -hmm. but there's going to, it's here still here because the, there are lawbreakers mm -hmm. and et, et cetera uh, on that. So, uh, but we'll just take your copy of when you get this and just read through it. I, I sat down this afternoon and two or three times just reading over it. It kind of helps me focus because here, we're going to be looking at the seven uh, seals. Yeah, if, if, when I get through here. <clears throat> the, at, the, at the seven seals. Now, the seven seals, according to this chart, comes about after the rapture, which I agree with because... What we're fixing to get into is the during the from the tribulation and all the everything that's happening during those chapters right there. The church is not going to be here. We're going to be spared that. That's why we have the rapture. That's why we're taken out of this world because we don't we're saved from the punishment of that because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh Noah and his family were saved from the punishment of that world at that time. They were taken out. The ark that they were on saved them. Our ark is Jesus Christ himself. When we accept Christ as our Savior and Lord, he is our ark. We are in him, and he is in us. Now, that's scriptural. That's what the Bible teaches. We, by faith, are in Christ, and he is in us. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth within me. It's by his faith that I live, and his life that I live. So therefore, if I'm in Christ, and Christ is in me, then, then I'm not going to be here when all that stuff happens. All that. Everything still working okay? Good, good, okay. Uh, so, um, uh, as, as we look at this, so after the rapture, they have what is called the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse. We have the souls of the martyrs. Uh, the whole world trembles under physical uh, charges, uh, changes, excuse me. And internal interval. interval, thank you. Um, the 144,000. Now, that is not the Jehovah's Witnesses, folks. <laughs> uh, if there's any JWs listening, I'm uh, you know, I'm sorry, I, I've got some bad news for you. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're, you're not going to be part of that, uh, because those are Jews only 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes, okay? And they're specifically picked by God himself, okay? Not by your leaders on that. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> and then you have the uh, silence, time of silence, uh, golden, called the golden uh, censer, okay? And, and then you have the seven trumpets. Now those were the, the seven seals. And then you got the seven trumpets. And then the seven trumpets, you're going to have hail, uh, fire mixed with blood. Uh, and in this, in this case, I mentioned this morning, and when, when the word fire is used, it's talking about judgment. Okay? Well, it's going to be both. <laughs> and, this, and this time, it's going to be real fire, and it's, going, it's a judging fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, and then you've got a mountain, 
that's thrown into the sea. You've got the, the wood, uh, warm wood. You've got a third of the sun, the moon, and the stars that are struck. The plague of the locust. The release of the four angels, uh, which won't be nice. They won't be kissing you and putting you in, and wrapping you up and putting you in bed. <laughs> uh, then the angel and, and the little book, you'll have two witnesses and woe on earth and worship in heaven. All right. Then you've got the uh, counterfeit trinity, which is Satan. Okay. There's going to be war in heaven. Saints fall from heaven. The beast from the sea, the beast from the earth. The lamb and the 144,000, the 200 miles of, of bloodshed, okay? All of that's going to be covered. Uh, the uh, counterfeit trinity is the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet or the anti-spirit, okay? Uh, you've got then the seven bowls, and they're not going to be very nice either. Uh, the ugly and painful sores, seat that turns into blood, rivers and streams of, of water become blood. Sun scorches people with fire. There again, fire is going to be both. Okay, it's a judgment. The, the reason the fire's here is they're being judged because of it. Uh, yes, yes, very true. And it's, it's no accident that God had those plagues fall upon the, the Egyptians on that. It's okay. Uh, so then you've got darkness. You've got the Euphrates River drying up and tremendous earthquakes. And you've got Armageddon. You've got the end of the false religion, the collapse of the world market, and the second coming of Jesus Christ with the church. Okay. When uh, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then you've got... Where's my other sheet? Oh, right here. <laughs> okay. Uh, then we will also cover the uh, thousand-year reign of Christ, the white throne judgment, new heaven and new earth. Okay, and all of that is, is going to be covered now. So when you get this, don't lose it. Hang on to it and, and read through it because this will help you begin... As, as we get further into the study, this will help you focus on knowing, okay, that's what's happening, okay? And that's happening, and this is fixing to happen. And so, and it just kind of puts everything into place and into focus as you go through it. Uh, as I told Liz and JR a while ago when I came in, they asked me, how are you doing? I said, I'm exhausted. They said, why? Because then I showed them all my notes and everything. I said, I have read through so much that I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I said, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> He's going to win. <laughs> but I kind of figured that you wanted me to tell you a little bit more detail than just, well, the Lord wins. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> That's right. <laughs> I've read that last sentence. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, just that and then. I don't need yeah. that. No, that. this right, this yeah. and these two pages okay, right here. No, well, if you want yeah. to, okay, I don't care. I've got here. Here, <clears throat> you can give hers back on that. <clears throat> anyway, so, whew, I'm out of breath. Okay, uh, the, there's, the thing is, as, as we get into this further and we go into uh, the scroll of the seals, the identification of the lamb, the description of the lamb, the location of the lamb, the adoration of, of the lamb. I mean, those are just some of the topics that I've got that we're going to be covering and talking about. As we get through this, folks, this is having that in front of you and reading over it is going to help clarify things as you get through that. And as you go, then it's, it's 
keeping it in place as you think through it. And it won't be as confusing. Will you understand all of it? No. <laughs> Do you have to? No. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you supposed to accept it and believe it? Yes. Yes, on that. Okay, so uh, that's, 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 that's where we are at, 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 at this point on that. So uh, basically, I'm going to stop at this point. I know this is less than, than the hour than, than, than what we have set, set aside, but, but um, I, I just, I don't know, in, in putting all of this together, I just felt like that it would be better just to kind of have a nutshell of what was happening what we've talked about and what we're going to talk about and how it blends and comes together on, on that. That's the only thing that's really helping me to make sense of, of, of this because uh, in all of this that I've read and I've studied and going through, it can be exasperating. <laughs> Uh, overwhelming yeah and and all of that and so uh it just doing like i said just picking up my my my, my charts and i've got i don't know probably five or six different timeline charts i think i've i've given y'all two different ones or so the the chart of, of the ages uh is is a good one that that i've given you before that you can go through and read just just keeping all of that in mind, yeah, that one right there. Uh, all of that in, in mind can help help you begin to get a grasp of what revelation is all about. And and it kind of <laughs> I kind of relate a little bit to John when the scripture says. The Lord spoke to him, and what did he do? He fell on his face. <laughs> he was overwhelmed with what was happening, and it can be overwhelming. We don't want that to happen. We want to just take little bitty bites of it and, and allow the Spirit of God to begin to, to grant us the understanding that we as each individual need to have as we look and step and go forward in the study of of, of revelation uh, on that. I think there's a lot of things that, you know, as we go through this, it opens our eyes to what we should be looking for. In society today, I think a lot about the artificial intelligence and how Satan can use that, especially mm. during the tribulation time. But even before and that, is right now. Right now, because yeah, you can. They can use that, and you don't even realize you're looking at something that was created with artificial intelligence, and you don't know whether it's true. It's it's a good thing, and there's some bad things. Yeah, yeah. Some of the good things on it on you version. Some of the devotionals mm -hmm. that I'm listening to is AI. You can tell by listening to the voice. You can tell that's a computer voice. You know, it sounds like a sound sounds like a human. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the you know there there's there's good, but you got to be careful because on on that and everything. So like the computer with those hand guns they have. Yeah, yeah. They're coming out already. Like in Genesis, you get that six 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 killing here in Revelation. Yeah. So, so some of the things that we're going to be looking at now is is uh, well, this the I'll probably touch a little bit on 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 the rapture next. By the way, next week we will not have our our stuff. That's right. Yeah. By this time, we'll we better be in Irving. <laughs> We better be in our motel room and you know, all <laughs> snuggled in. Uh, but um, in anyway, so it'll be Sunday week 
before we we come back. But we'll we'll begin to look at what's next on our our chart here, okay? Which is the rapture of the church, and and what we can learn about that. Now, as we get into that, we'll be talking about the millennial. Uh, and the differences of pre, post, and ah, uh, what does that mean? You know, pre-millennial, well, you know what pre means is pre, before, okay? Post, at the same time, ah, uh, is after, okay? So there's people that believe that, that uh, the rapture will happen before, okay? And the, the post, there's some, they believe it's already, that, that the rapture is not really going to happen uh, but that we're going through the tribulation right now. This it's is like it, it? it does feel like it at times, yeah. And then those that are ah, which is afterwards, uh, that uh, uh, the rapture will be after the uh, tribulation that we'll have to go through it. Uh, that to me, that's just not biblical. That doesn't follow along with with how God has taken care of His people as a whole. On that. Yeah, we have suffered and do suffer tribulations from time to time on, yes, on that. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, yeah, on that. So, uh, I mean, anyway, there's there's just uh, so much uh, on that. Uh, I got 22 chapters right here. The 10,000 years and the New Jerusalem and all of that's going to be part of it uh, that we'll, we'll get into it and everything. <laughs> I've tried to talk fast to get all this in uh, and hope it's not been too fast and I hope that you've understood and hope that, that we're pulling all of these weeks that we've had before, pulling that together and keeping it in, in focus and what, what's going on and everything. Okay? Any question at this point? Okay. All right. I thank those of y'all that are tuned in on the live stream. Thank you. And remember, we won't be streaming next week. It'll be Sunday after uh, that uh, and everything. So uh, let's have a word of prayer, and we'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you so much that uh, we have the opportunity to come together to study your word. Thank you for helping us to see uh, further into the book of Revelation that which you revealed to John. Help us to study it and to grasp that which will help us have a closer walk with you. We thank you, Jesus. In your sweet name we pray. Amen. All right, we thank y'all. Bye-bye.